I'm Scott Mansell and welcome to Driver 61's University Series. This series is a collection of whiteboard tutorials taking you from the very basics of circuit driving to more advanced theories later on. Today we're going to take a look at the most basic of theories you need to know for circuit driving. What is the racing line and why we take a specific line through a corner. Now it may be that you already know how to take a racing line but you may not know why and that's always a good thing to learn. So first up we're going to take a look at the segments of a corner. If you take a look at this diagram here it shows a very simple right hander but we're just going to run over some of the terminology that we'll be using later in this tutorial. So we're arriving at the corner, we get on the brakes and this is what we call the braking point. Very very simple. After this as we're decelerating the car we have the turning point which is where we turn the car into the corner. At the turning point we're actually aiming for the apex point which is where you and the car will meet the inside of the corner to maximize the arc and speed through that turn. After this we have the exit point where we allow the car to push all the way to the outside of the circuit. Now this is a very simple diagram designed just to show you these specific points of the corner. It's important to remember that your, your line will not always be this perfect when you're on the circuit and to be honest this is the line for, for this corner in isolation. If there's a, a, a longer straight after it or a, or a corner that may turn left or turn right, your line through that corner will be affected by what follows the corner itself. It also depends on what kind of car you're driving. If you're in a slow car or a, a car that isn't very powerful, your line will be different to if you're in a very, very powerful so now we're going to take a look at the geometric line. The geometric line is the perfect line through a corner, the mathematical best line through a corner, if there's nothing else influencing that corner. It's the best use of a circuit. So you can see here on the green line we have the, the perfect geometric line. It's actually symmetrical side to side and it's the, the, the line of least resistance as you're coming through a corner. It's the biggest arc that you can take through the corner. As you can see here, we're using every inch of the circuit. We're going from the outside to the outside again. And really the whole purpose of this is to make the corner as wide as possible. The wider the corner, obviously the faster the corner, and that improves your lap time. If you even take a few inches uh, away from the edge of the circuit on the corner entry, there's no way that you can carry as much speed through the corner as if you're using all the road on the outside. So when you're driving it's very important that you try to use every inch of the corner. However when we're racing or driving on a circuit the geometric line often isn't the quickest line through a corner. The reason being that after the corner the straights or the following corner are, are, are very important too. So for example um, if we're coming through this tight right hander here the section after the corner is often more important than the corner itself as if you carry one mile an hour more on the corner exit you continue to carry that speed all the way down the next straight and this comes to a, a big reduction in lap time which is what we're aiming for. So really we need to change our line to focus on the exit of the corner rather than the entry that we saw here on the geometric line. So what we do if you look at the the green line is the geometric line. It comes in quite early, reaches the apex in the middle of the corner and then pushes out and uses all the road on the exit. It's the smoothest curve through the corner. However, if you take a look at the orange line, you can see that we come in a little bit wider, the turning point is a little bit later and we try to open up the exit here so that we can get out the corner as fast as possible. Now the positives of the ideal racing line Firstly, you're spending less time in the corner. This period where you're turning the car is shorter. Obviously the car can go the fastest in a straight line, so we really want to minimize the time that we're turning the car. After this, we can also see that we can accelerate earlier. Because we're coming in wider on this orange ideal racing line, we apex a little bit later, and it means that this section is a lot straighter which means that we can get to the accelerator sooner and accelerate out of the corner, keeping that higher speed going all the way down the next straight, again improving our lap time. The final positive of the ideal racing line is that we have that slightly later turn in, which means that we can brake slightly later. 
Because we're, we're beginning this turn a little bit later than the geometric line, it means that we can continue on the accelerator on the previous straight for a little bit longer before we then get on the brakes. Now the only negative is that we are turning in a little bit later and this means that we have to turn the car a little bit tighter. Because we're not on the perfect geometric line here where the, where the radius is constant, we have to do more turning in this period here, which means that we have to turn the car a little bit more. When you need to turn the car a little bit more, it means that the minimum speed in this area will be slightly lower than the geometric line. But you more than make up for this on the following straight. Now if we take a look at the, the graph at the bottom here, it shows speed versus distance for the car in this corner here. So the green line is a geometric line. You can see the braking here, the corner, and then the acceleration out of the corner. And the orange line is the ideal racing line. So the advantages of the ideal racing line is that we can brake a little bit later. So we have a higher speed a bit further into the corner. You can see the car decelerating and we have a, uh, a slower minimum speed here, which will be about this point in the corner. However, because we get the car turned and we can see the exit and, and straight line the exit a little bit more, it means that we can get back on the accelerator earlier and harder and we then carry that speed along the next straight. And you can see the difference in the two lines on the exit here is quite substantial and that improves our lap time significantly. So one final thing to note is that the faster the corner, the closer to the geometric line will be and the slower the corner, the the, the further away will be from the geometric line where we're actually focusing more on the exit speed rather than the mid speed or the, the, the apex speed. So as you can see here, uh, we have a hairpin, 180 degree hairpin. The green line again is a geometric line. It comes in with the perfect curve and then pushes out. However, the, the orange line, as you can see here, is substantially different to the geometric line. Now the reason for this is that we're coming in, we're coming in wide and we're apexing late so that we focus on this exit. In a slower corner, you have more potential to accelerate. For example, maybe we're apexing here at 30 or 40 miles an hour and then there's a straight afterwards that will reach 150 miles an hour. Well, there's a big difference in speed there. So it's preferable to concentrate on the exit so we can really get on the power early and carry that speed and reach our maximum velocity as soon as possible. So if you take a look at the, the next diagram, it shows a very fast right-hander. The green line again is the geometric line and the orange is the ideal racing line. And you can see here that they're very close together. For example, the apex speed here might be 110 miles an hour and at the, follow, the following straight, we're gonna reach 150. So there isn't that much acceleration to carry through the corner or after the corner. So it's very important to actually keep the momentum going through the corner as we don't need to accelerate that much after the corner itself. Okay guys, so that's it for this first tutorial on the racing line. If you have any comments, please get in touch and don't forget to download the cheat sheet for the racing line tutorial so you can put this into practice as soon as possible on the racing circuit. Thank you for watching and goodbye.